Hello, I'm Lux, and I'm glad this episode was better than the last one. <laughs> and I'm Ember, and this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 19, Road to Friendship. That, that was a very pleasant episode. There was nothing really bad about it. There was like one cringy moment, and I don't trust the Saddle Arabian guy, mainly because of the way he was acting, not because he's Saddle Arabian. Just to clear that up. That's entirely about his behavior. Because just the way he was acting, he was, to me, he was acting slightly sleazy. He was basically the instigator of this entire thing. Because he approaches Trixie, it's because of him that Trixie's going to Saddle Arabia in the first place. So it's his fault this whole thing started. And then apparently he was following them the entire time. And he keeps trying to trade his caravan. When his caravan is obviously better, he even states that his is better. So why did he want her caravan? I don't know. I'm thinking maybe it's along the lines of he wanted her to get to Saddle Arabia quicker because he really liked her show. But he's taller than her. That caravan is larger, which means it is probably also heavier and would be more difficult for a single pony to pull. Hmm. I think it was proven in the episode that it was heavier because Starlight had issues lifting it. I'm thinking that was also partially mental state. A little bit. Because she's been proven to be extremely strong in a lot of areas of magic, so levitating... Shouldn't have been a problem, and seriously, even on their trip outward before they were fighting, I'm like, why don't you just wink it across? Not just that, there's... Every night, put a protective spell around the items and put them outside. Then you have plenty of room inside, and since you're both unicorns, you can teleport everything back inside. You could even probably cast some type of locomotion magic on the stuff and have it pack itself. So, another episode where we can come up with magical solutions and the episode doesn't. But, oh my goodness, the shipping f fuel. Because <laughs> they were both so happy that they could cuddle together in that cozy space. Quick personal note, I have actually been in a car packed way more full than Trixie's wagon on a road trip. So have I. I literally had about five inches for my butt, and I'm pretty sure I wasn't wearing a seatbelt. <laughs> five inches? You were lucky! I was like ten. <laughs> I still said you were lucky, because I was packed into this back of this station wagon so tight that I couldn't see really much out the window. I'm pretty sure it was illegal how packed this car was. Likewise. Because I couldn't see out the back to my brother or out the window, kind of. There was like, you know how the windows have a spot where you can roll it down and then they have a little sli slice on the side here where there's a little bit of window and a bar separating between the part that you can actually roll down and the part? And a lot of the older cars. Well, all I had was that slice. So I could kind of see. And moving was not really an option. I was seatbelted in, though. Because they did that first before they packed everything else around me. I'm trying to remember, with it being that crowded, how I would have been able to have a seatbelt on. I'm not saying I didn't have one. I'm just like, how would that have worked? And I'm pretty sure this was before the back seats and a lot of station wagons had the cross seatbelt. I'm pretty sure this is the one that only went across your waist, so that's another factor. We, we kind of know how Trixie and them felt. This was also a long road trip for me, by the way. This was from California to New Mexico. Mine was across state lines, too. Also, I'm surprised we didn't get stopped at the border because we were carrying plant material. Wow. From someone's garden. Wow. At least it's not bringing uh, ham back from Canada. Girl, that's a problem. Apparently, they make really good ham up there, and people try to smuggle it back here. And that's kind of a no-no unless it's particularly checked out and you have a license and everything. You know, insects, invasive species, all that fun stuff. Yeah, well, we're having all sorts of fun stuff with various species infecting various crops and all sorts of quarantines. But back to the episode, which I enjoyed that song. It felt very season one to me. It felt very natural, and for a moment, I didn't think they were going to have a song because they were like, oh yeah, it's so good, it's not the others. They would probably break into song right here. And then the songs 
the music sounded like it could be a song. And I'm like, oh, they're just going to play this jazzy tune. No singing. Especially since they held the instrumental or what's called the vamp for longer than I expected them to. And then they actually started singing. And I'm like, gotcha. <laughs> and that song was like, it's so nice. I'm like, you're leading up to failure, aren't you? Oh, yeah. It also kind of reminded me of a Disney movie. Specifically, a Goofy movie. That whole On the Open Road song? Yes. Wonderful movie, the Goofy movie. It's been fantastic, darling. Apparently Lex is now channeling Zsa Zsa Gabor. <laughs> I have no idea who I channel, dear. I just do it. Uh, so, yeah. Spending time together, extended periods of time together, can be a trial for friends. Especially traveling... And especially when things are so unequal, because the wagon belongs to Trixie. Trixie's used to traveling. So they kind of needed to set a discussion, you know, and have some ground rules of this is how I normally travel. This is what I normally do. The wagon has this much important to me because I've had it for a while. It was my only traveling companion. You know, that's thing she could have told the starlight, probably avoided that whole thing. I can understand starlight not knowing how valuable the wagon was but it's still like this is just a dream right yeah lex said that i'm like no no starlight still actually did this she still has the occasional villain backslide because she took something that wasn't hers and traded it away which amounts to theft and then she compounded that by taking the new caravan with her when she and trixie had their falling out so not only did she steal Trixie's caravan and sell it she kept the new caravan that she got by stealing Trixie's when I was watching her drag the luggage I also got a flashback of Trixie does not trust wheels <laughs> when Trixie went evil <laughs> well more evil more um antagonist yes as opposed to uh murky and lurky evil also, really, if you think about it, she wasn't really evil in the first episode. She was definitely portrayed as an antagonist and a little arrogant, but... She wasn't really a villain. I was thinking specifically of the episode where she had the dark magic object. I, I was saying that going from that to that was more evil. So yes. I'm correcting that it's not evil. She was just becoming more of an antagonist. And she was being corrupted by an evil object, but hey. Well, that kind of stuff happens. Especially in the MLP universe. Yep. Even relatively safe-seeming objects like Princess Cadence's heart necklace. Hmm. Check the book about Twilight having that necklace when she first becomes a princess. Hmm. I haven't actually read that book. We have it around here somewhere. I just haven't really read it. I'm not much of a physical reader. I like to listen to my books. And there's me. Oh, there's a book on this table. Three hours later. She's, if it's a shorter book, she's read it three times and going, you know, I'm not quite sure why I've read this three times, but. Ah, but back to the episode, because there was a lot of nice stuff in here. This could very easily tie back for any younger viewers with sleepovers, you know, and respecting each other's space and people having different ways of perceiving things and processes. Also, I, I was wondering if the whole thing with the wagon also went back to when Trixie became evil and she started hating wagons and wheels, specifically. Maybe she really learned to appreciate wheels and how easy they make things to move. Quite possibly. Also, it could be a small hint of backstory, because we don't really know much about where Trixie came from and stuff. No, and that exposition of how, you know, she's had the wagon forever and it's been her only companion through all these lonely times. Because, yeah, Trixie hasn't had a lot of friends. Though I was a little disappointed when she was having her fight with Starlight and she said, no, I lost my caravan and my best friend. I thought she meant the wagon and Starlight because Starlight betrayed her. Mm. But she was actually talking about the caravan. I like my interpretation better. Because I lost my most precious possession and my best friend betrayed me. Hmm. That's a good interpretation. I didn't really have 
an interpretation for best friend, but I think my brain locked on to her talking about the wagon first. Then I was trying to think of like, what's another way you could interpret this? And that's a very good way of interpreting that. And the, the cringy part we're talking about is, um, God, I can't really remember because I think I was like, cringy part? <laughs> It was when they were doing the performance when they were fighting and sleep deprived. Like, could you guys at least fake it? If you're not going to get along, why are you putting on the show? I, I do like the subtle Urbion, though. It was much better in Ponyville. It was because they were well rested and getting along. Also, it was very fun in Ponyville. I liked how everyone in not only enjoyed her performance, but how things with her and Twilight seem to be pretty much smoothed over. And that reminds me of another thing I enjoyed from the episode that we were both like, they're gonna... They didn't. Because we got to see once again the sunshine, sunshine, ladybugs awake. <laughs> the best thing about that was Starlight and Trixie's reaction of, yeah, we would never, never. Mm -hmm. And then there's that scene where, show me something special that shows your... You are good friends. And they're like, yeah, we've got this secret dance, don't we? Yeah. yeah, this magic chant that we do all the time, our friendship chant, because we're such good friends. And I figured, and Lux figured, they were going to totally do Twilight and Cadence's chant. They kept the cadence of it, pun intended. <laughs> nice. It, I was like, I was totally expecting them to just rip that off. Totally. Do it completely, you know? But no, they do something else. And I kind of felt like they kind of let a joke go there. Like they fell flat on that joke. But I see the other joke there and I appreciate that. But I'm like, you, you kind of set something up and you didn't go through with it. <laughs> but it did get the desired end result because the Saddle Arabian was all, yeah, you guys are definitely friends because you would not have embarrassed yourselves that much if you weren't. Therefore, trade back. I also like, I can wait as long as you can. <laughs> Basically that thing. And I just, that whole section with Trixie was great because she was like, I am not moving. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, the road is wider than you are, Trixie. I'm pretty sure he can go around. Also, he's a unicorn. I'm pretty sure he can levitate the caravan over you. I think it's the only time I really kind of liked him as a character is how he was interacting with Trixie there. Just a mm-hmm sip. Other than that, I was like, he's he's a bit sleazy. He's not setting off as many alarm bells as Cozy Glow, but he is setting off a couple. Mm hmm Interesting things come up in Google image search for Cozy Glow. Not those kind of things, internet. But a lot of people apparently do think she's evil. I mean it's kinda hard not to with the first episode and a lot of people were also following our thing of in that one episode I was like yeah it's cozy glow who gave away the book because <laughs> as a student she would have a school book you would think a lot of people seem to think that she was the one responsible we've got bigger theories you can find those in our previous episodes please go and watch did my plug succeed we have power cool <laughs> so Yes, fun episode and nice to see some of those locations because while they were traveling, I'm like, oh, I kind of remember that place. Oh, I kind of remember that place. Cool. Continuity. And I love how they made us forget about the guy in the trunk because I had completely forgot about him until it opened up. I was like, oh, <laughs> uh, we never did see on stage that they let him out. You're right. There is enough room in this trunk. It's nice. Is it o is it over? Eh. Kunk. Eh? Like, does that now technically count as kidnapping? Eh. Also, just to check, why are you guys picking the older ponies? Because in Ponyville you picked Granny Smith, and apparently didn't tell her enough about the trick because she would have been game based on their time in Las Pegasus. Hmm. And then... On your road trip, you picked another elder pony. I would think if you could get away with it from the parents, foals would be easier to cram into the trunk. Hmm. Also, I love how I got to see some of how the trick works based on how bad they did it near the end. 
Because Trixie was still walking up the stairs. Because they had the timing with the smoke bombs off. Because, no, she was never in the trunk. <laughs> Ever. She could have been. Who knows? I mean, she is a stage magician, but I'm pretty sure she has some actual magic, not just levitation. Don't know about winking, though. Have we ever seen her wink without another unicorn who can actually wink? No, she's very weak in terms of pure unicorn magic. Hmm. It's mostly stage magic that she focuses on, and even then she's not the best illusionist. I still think that particular pony at Las Pegasus is, like, related to her in some way. Maybe not her father, but maybe a brother or something to her father. Meaning an uncle? Yes. That. That word. Just checking. <laughs> Impossible, and there are all sorts of internet theories and fan art of the various possible relationship trees there. Hmm. So anything else you'd like to go over about the episode, or should we wrap things up? Well, it was fun that uh, Cadence and Flurry Heart were there visiting. Oh yeah, the cute part at the beginning. <gasps> oh! <laughs> yeah, where Flurry Heart's like, I can't watch! Which is adorable. Yeah, especially with how much uh, Starlight was playing things up. So over the top of, oh no, it was like in Little Witch Academia, where during the big final battle, the one senior witch is playing it up as a performance, going, oh no, the heroes are having this trouble. You must help them by doing this. <laughs> when inside, she's thinking, oh god, they're having trouble. Okay, I need to get them help now. <laughs> That was the second Little Witch Academia movie. We still need to watch the TV series. In our infinite spare time, you know, when more current series go on hiatus. And maybe we'll get to some other shows, older ones, maybe, ever, free time. We would love to actually go back and watch some of the older shows we liked when we were younger and talk about those, but we got plenty of other shows to watch. But yeah, this was an extremely enjoyable episode. It wasn't like the best episode ever, but it was very... Comfort food. What do you think? It was solid. I mean, it didn't have a lot of cringy moments. It didn't necessarily move the overarching plot along, but it did have character development and good lessons. I'd also like to point out that, you know, the return of Starlight's green couch, and also like to point out that while one can be good at counseling others, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can go through and sort out your own feelings because she helped Trixie sort out her feelings. She had a line of students that she was helping. Which apparently wasn't a thing until she showed her chops because before she was talking about how bored she was, how there was nothing going on, and now she's got a line. So that was either plot convenience or things have picked up because... The students have seen more of what she can do. They're progressing and learning new things about friendship. So they're starting to feel conflicted where before they weren't. Yeah, this was a very comfortable episode. It, I guess it didn't progress the story really any further. It gave us backstory, it gave us development. All of it was very solid. The cringy moment was only one moment and it really didn't last that long. It's just the rest of the episode was flowing so smoothly where we weren't expecting cringy. So that's mainly why it was cringy. It was like, oh, we weren't quite ready for that. I think that's everything we want to cover? Well, additional uses for magic. Once again, the sound bubble would be awesome. With the snoring and the talking. And since Starlight knows she snores, isn't that something you want to tell somebody before you start sharing sleeping space? I'm trying to remember. I think she mentioned something about her villagers back, apparently, back when she was... Yes, she had them convinced that, like, the place was surrounded by a bunch of wild animals. Could be another reason nobody ever left that village. <laughs> ah, only I, the great and powerful Starlight. Also, I like the Miss Powerful. Um, that's not what usual people call me, but I'll accept that. Yeah, it's like, uh, normally I go by Trixie, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently she needs to get her wagon fixed, because... She's having trouble with that door. Like, take it somewhere where it can be repaired a little bit so you don't have issues like that. It's an old wagon. It doesn't mean you shouldn't take care of it. Then, okay, you've stated that you're on a budget. So budget some for repairs because 
This is very needful. You're a traveling magician, so not only does this have all your gear, it's your stage and your home. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure there's plenty, especially with the way you've been acting lately, plenty of people in Ponyville who would gladly help you for either cheaper or exchange for skills. Because I'm pretty sure you have some skills that would help someone in Ponyville. Teach them a basic stage magic trick. Give them one of your 50 wands that does the whole wand into flower thing. Or ask Starlight for some help. I'm pretty sure she could ask someone in town who has more skills than her in that area. Yes, because that's something you do. You ask your friends for help, and you do so without taking advantage of them. Okay, outro. Hmm, what is that again? Oh yeah, the name of the show plus our- Yes, that's it! This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 8, Episode 19, Road to Friendship. And this has been the road to the end of this episode. Hi. Glad you could make it. This is not Tidal Arabia. It's a place on the internet. There's many places on the internet. Thank you for coming to ours. And you can help our place stay around by subscribing, watching more videos, liking, sharing our videos with your friends. You probably have lots of friends who would like to come here and listen to a bunch of people talk about, well, two people talk about things they like. You might like our things too. Also, if they just like to watch art, Go ahead, mute the video, watch the time lapse. I I'm okay. YouTube still counts that as a watch. And, you know, if you enjoy that portion of the content, then go for it. Because we do this mainly for Lux to practice drawing. Yeah, and you can put on your own music. I don't care. Watch my video, listen to music, do something else. Let it play in the background. No problem here. You can even just play the sound. Do something else. We're good with that too. Also, if you just want to look at the art in still form, there's links below to where you can find it all over the place. If you want some art of your own, I take commissions, small fee, I give you art. That's how that works. For a monthly small fee, you can also go to my Patreon and get high quality content there. Well, high quality versions of the art I do there. I don't know how high quality the content is. <laughs> uh, but I'm confident enough to say my stuff's high quality. You'll enjoy it. Because confidence makes the man. Or pony in this case. Or entity on the internet, you know, random floating voice. If you uh, just want to do a one-time payment, there's also coffee. Because I need coffee. I stay up late nights drawing stuff. Y you think I play video games? I don't even know what that is anymore. Glad you came by. Bye. And now over to Ember. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive and the form of views, likes, comments, dialogue, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence. Or they're making new friends at the school and they're running into problems like, oh, I, I thought you liked that too. Only if there's peanut butter involved. Oh my god, Amber, that expression. I just picked something random and it happened to be peanut butter. Yeah, and I'm like, that was a little too random. I was talking about crackers. Jeez. <laughs>